mark. Here's a little video showing us how to use the rotor machining brake lathe. So we've got our rotor here. Our first step anytime we want to use this is to first take our measurements. We have to decide whether or not this rotor is still serviceable. So we're going to take our micrometer, we're going to take accurate measurements and compare that with our specifications. So we know how to use this already. Now when we get into setting up the brake lathe, the most important thing we have to remember is the finish of our mounting hub. If our mounting hub is dirty like we see here or has rust or corrosion, it's not going to sit evenly on our brake lathe. So step number one, clean it up. As you can see, I've begun doing that already. I'm just going to finish it up so that we're in a good spot to machine this rotor. As always, safety glasses, safety first. Both sides. Now that I'm starting with a nice clean surface on both sides of our rotor, I'm going to select the right size adapters to help set this up. So just like when we're mounting a wheel, on a tire balancer, we need to select the right size centering cone. Here I've chose this medium size one, and you can see the fit is excellent. That's the right size cone. Our, this component will center our rotor, but we need the component that will hold our rotor. On the bottom of our, uh, of our lathe, we have these adapters. So we want to select the right size adapter that will fit inside with a little bit of room. So this is the right size adapter that we're going to use here, and they always come in pairs. So inner and outer. So first, our inner adapter. Before we put on our centering cone, we need a spring to keep the tension on it. Then, centering cone. Followed by our rotor. At this point, you can see that it's interfering with the machine. We need to start the machine in the right spot, so let's draw it all the way out by unwinding our feed counterclockwise. Once we've done that, we're now going to put on our outer mounting hub. At this point, if we put on our nut, it will not reach all the way. So what we do want to put on then is some spacers. The spacer that I would recommend using every time is this one here. It's got a weight mounted on rubber. It's a dampener. So that will help dampen vibrations. That will cause a poor finish. After that, I still need a little bit more of a spacer. So I can use any one of these components here as a, an adapter or a spacer to line things up. One thing to remember about this hub nut is that it is a left-hand thread. What's the purpose of the left-hand thread? So that it doesn't loosen off as we're machining the rotor. So as the friction increases here on our rotor surfaces, it will actually tighten up that nut. So that's in our favor. When we go to tighten this, we need to use the right tool. So there's a tool for the job, and it's over here at this other lathe, so I'm just going to step aside and grab that. And here it is. So, a very special, special wrench. Remember again, this is a left hand thread. So counterclockwise to tighten it, and that's all we need. Good to go. Now at this point, we need to line up our cutting heads with our rotor. As you can see here, we're not in the middle. Once again, our tool has the right size nut on the back side of it. We loosen it off, and now we can line up our cutting head wherever we like. We want to try and get it centered. Once it's centered, Snug it back up. Now, it doesn't need to be crazy tight, but it needs to be tight enough that it's not going to move on its own. So give it a good pull. There we are here. And now, if I use this center bolt here as a guide, I want to get that right about to the vented portion of my rotor. In that way, I'm going to be balanced side to side. Before we continue on here, we need to make sure that we have our vibration dampening spring. Once again, trying to reduce those vibrations so our cutting tips do not bounce on the rotor. Next, I'm going to do a scratch test. So I can start my, my uh, brake lathe here. Down on the bottom here, you're going to see a power button. That power button turns on our machine. It is also our only emergency stop 
So beware that if you were to climb over this machine or lean over it at any point, there's no way to stop the machine. Always work from the appropriate side. Beware that you don't have any strings. Make sure you have nothing hanging. Make sure you don't have any long sleeves, anything that could get caught in the machine. So now we start it. I'm going to bring my cutting table forward and draw out my cutting tips as far as I go. If they need a little tap, that will help draw them out. Now we bring in our cutting head and we're going to draw our tips towards the rotor. At this point, I want to know whether or not my rotor is straight on the lathe or not. By doing a scratch test, it will tell me just that. So I'm going to be careful as I get closer, draw my light in, and what I'm going to do is bring that cutting tip so it just touches the face of the rotor. And so now you might hear, we have a little scratch, 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 but it's not scratching all the way around. When I stop my machine, I can now see that the rotor is being cut on one side, but not on the other. There's two possible scenarios that could bring that about. Either there's run out in the rotor, or I have mounted the rotor crooked. It is not straight. So what I'm going to do is test whether it's me or it's the rotor. So what I will do is I will loosen off the nut now at this point, And I will turn the rotor 180 degrees while holding the adapter. Now I'll tighten it up again. Remember, it's a left-hand thread. And I always want to put my tool away so it doesn't vibrate while it's sitting on the machine and go flying. Now I'll make sure that the head is away, it's not touching. I'll go to a new position and start the lathe again. Now I'm going to try that scratch test one more time. Just touching the rotor. Stop and have a look at your work. At this point, I can turn my rotor ever so slightly and I can see that my first scratch test is right beside my second scratch test. That tells me that it's not the mounting of the rotor, it's the rotor itself that has run out. That's okay because I'm going to machine that run out out of this rotor. It's one of the main reasons why we machine rotors. So we're good to go. Now I'm going to start the lathe back up again and I'm going to bring in both my cutting tips till they just touch the rotor. I'm touching here, I'm going to snug down our adapter, I'm going to touch here, just touch ever so slightly, snug down my cutting tip. Now this is going to mark the zero point for my rotor. So I'm going to hold the dial while turning the indicator on the inside to zero, lining that up with my line there, my zero marker with the arrow. Same on the outside. We won't adjust this again throughout the whole procedure. This is a one-time setting. From here forward, I will just turn it in to give me more depth on my cutting tip. Now at this point, I want to go in all the way to the rotor. The lathe only cuts in one direction, it cuts in the outward direction. So I'm going to draw it all the way in. Be very careful as you get closer and closer to the center of the hub that you do not hit the hub. If you hit the hub, you'll destroy the rotor. So be very careful. The bigger the rust split ridge, the slower that you will want to go as you come in. You notice I've gone all the way to the end of the brake pad surface. I've gone all the way into the inner portion of the rotor. I'm in a good spot now. At this point, I'm going to set up how much I want to take off per side. So each side on a rough cut, because this rotor is in poor condition, I know I'm going to have to take at least one good rough cut and then a final cut. So I'm going to take off closer to the maximum limit because the rotor is in such poor condition. The maximum I want to take is anywhere between 6 and 10 thou per side. On this rotor, knowing that it's in such poor condition, I'm going to go up to 8 thousandths per side. So I turn my dial the clockwise direction on this side, I'm at 8 thou. I do the same on this side. Notice the feed arrow tells me the direction I want to turn the dial. I'm turning it forward until I reach 8 thou. At this point, I have to decide if I'm going to do a rough cut or a fine cut. We always begin with a rough cut. A rough cut can be taken faster and a fine cut needs to be taken slower. So here I'm going to turn my feed dial up a little bit higher towards the coarse end of it and put it in the right gear for what we're doing. We have the option of drum or rotor. 
And here, obviously, we're cutting a rotor, so I'm going to pull it into the rearward direction for rotor. As you can see, the feed automatically draws itself out. At this point, we'll zoom in and have a look at the rotor cutting surface as we go through here. Once we're no longer contacting the rotor surface, that cut is finished. So as you'll notice on this rotor here, we've eliminated all of the corrosion, all of the rust, and we have a nice even surface on this rotor. That's really what we want to look for at the end of our rough cut. That our rotor now is consistent all the way across. We have no grooves, we have no hot spots, and we have no rust or corrosion. And especially the end lip here is in good condition. At this point, I'm ready to do a finish cut on this rotor. Our goal of a finish cut is that it's a finer cut finish. As we uh, come from the inside towards the outside, it goes much slower. So if you think about something like a record, and a record uh, follows the groove on the record as it goes around and around and around, that needle moves further out towards the edge. We don't want our brake pads to be following that groove. So our goal then now is to do a much finer cut. So I'm going to do this by starting up the machine putting it in neutral and driving the cutting head back towards the center. Notice we didn't have to adjust anything, we just started the machine and now we're feeding it back in. Once again, I'm careful not to hit the center of the hub. Now I can take off more. I know how much I've taken off because I haven't adjusted uh, my settings here. I know that I've taken off 8 thou. I'm going to do a fine cut. On a fine cut, I want to take off less material. I don't need to take off as much. So I'm going to stick in the range between 4 to 6 thou. I can take off less. However, it's likely to burn my tips. They will wear out prematurely. So I'm at 8. I'm going to turn my dial up to 12. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. And once again, I've got to set my feed speed. Because it's a fine cut, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to go about half the speed so I get a better finish on the rotor. And once again, put it into the rotor position and allow the machine to do its work. At this point, we've finished our fine cut. So now what we want to do is inspect our work. So we turn off our lathe. And what we're looking for is the finish on this rotor. We can do an easy test by grabbing onto it, feeling with our nail. And we don't want to feel any deep grooves on here. If we've done a good job, that should feel very smooth to the touch. However, as we're machining this rotor, you'll notice that we're cutting only in one direction. So it, because we're cutting in only one direction, we're making a directional finish. That directional finish is not in our favor because as our brake pads touch the surface of the rotor and are clamped into that rotor, it's going to want to follow that directional finish. If it follows a directional finish, it's either going to want to drive it up or down depending on what side of the car it's on. And at that point, it's going to rattle this pad back and forth into our bracket or our hanger. It's something that we do not want. So how do we prevent that? We need to put a non-directional finish. There's an easy way we can do that with a piece of sandpaper. At this point, I'm going to put my machine back in neutral, draw it out of the way so that I don't get my hand caught in here. I may take off this spring as well. I don't need to worry about vibration dampening anymore. And at this point, I'm going to start the lathe. It's still in neutral. I'm going to be very careful that I don't put any part of my body, my clothing, onto the lathe, onto the spindle here, because I can get pulled into it. Now what I'm going to try and do is just have a non rex finish. So I'm going to oscillate it back and forth. I can put moderate pressure. We will not hurt the surface of the rotor. The rotor is very, very hard. And we're trying to take off that finish. Once I'm done that, I can do the opposite side. Once again, careful not to get myself in a bad position. At this point, we can stop the lathe 
And if we're happy with our work, we're happy with that rotor, let's remove it. So once again, my tool is hanging up right where I left it. I'm going to loosen my spindle nut clockwise. It's always wise to put everything away as you're taking it off. That way, we're keeping a clean workspace and we don't lose any of the components. So here is my left hand nut, an adapter I use as a spacer, my harmonic balancer here, this dampener to remove vibrations. I've got my hub adapter. And now I'm down to my rotor. And if you look closely, the finish on this rotor is absolutely beautiful. This is what we'd expect from a brand new rotor. This is the type of finish that you're looking for. Notice the swirl marks on it. It's a non-directional finish. And so that pad is not going to follow that finish whatsoever. Be careful though. Notice how my fingers here have left a little bit of a greasy mark. We want to make sure that we clean that rotor before it goes on and not contaminate the pads. If your rotor comes out looking like this, you can be very proud of your work. That's an excellent finish. And this, this rotor is now ready to go back in service once we've checked our measurements that it's not below the specifications, not below our service specifications. If so, we can go back into service and look forward to some good wear and usage on this rotor. The last thing to remember is always leave your workspace the way that you found it, clean and tidy. At every uh, one of our brake blades, we have tools to be able to clean it off. That helps our tool to last a lot longer, to stay in good repair, and to not lose any of the critical components. So there's a brief little video on how we can machine a rotor.